Well, that should be very interesting. Well, today, I'm going to compare one of the two last movie from last year, which is The Marvels and Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. So without wasting any time, let's start this first round. Okay, this one is not even a shock. The Marvels has no story, and I literally noticed that when I watch it. Yike, this movie mostly focus on the three main characters teaming up, and then it just quickly rushes into the next scenes, and then the end credits road, the end. Well, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom do have a story. Black Manta has a revenge redemption arc, while after team up with Orb to protect the kingdom. Okay, well that is not even close. Aquaman 2 easily won the first round for having a plot unlike the Marvels. The Lost Kingdom has a loads of Cadidors, like the Cadidors from the previous film, and Aquaman and his wife new baby. The Cadidors just did fine in the sequel, but the way that they wasted these Cadidors was unacceptable. The characters are surprisingly entertaining in a hilarious way. When I'm going to see the Marvels, I was expecting the characters to be goofy, but I was right. But they're just goofy in a enjoyable way. Well, I know what you're thinking, and no, I still don't appreciate Nick Fury being a waste in this movie. Well, I knew the movie is going to go wrong, but I did not expect it to be a comedy. And with the movie being fast-paced, the characters has like a less reaction. Like the conversation between Carol and Monica is one minute long, and they don't even have time to have a heart-to-heart -heart in that scene. And even Carol don't have time to react when she's in a teenager room that has a bunch of obsessive stuff. Oh, all she did is just yoke around and then just move on, and she did not even show any body language. The pacing is just so ridiculously fast, it just rushed out Darbin origin story. Well, I didn't mind it as much at first, but I just couldn't help but not to ignore it. Well, in spite with the characters not getting a proper reaction, Kamala has carried this movie with her personality. I thought Kamala was great in this movie too. When I watched the Miss Marvel series, I wasn't a big fan of Kamala. I especially didn't like her from the comics and the cartoon because the way that they did follow Kamala was not impactful and it makes zero sense how she's any good. Oh, and I thought her superpowers are okay, but in the Marvels, they made her somewhat likable. Well, it turns out that Kamala has a excuse to not be Defolub, 
that much because she reminds me why I like Star Girl as a character. Well, I am not comparing these two young heroes from both comics, but it just hit that same connection that I use with Star Girl. So pretty much, Miss Marvel has gone from being my least Flayfit Marvel Cadeter to being my decent Flayfit Marvel Cadeter. But overall, these Cadeters are just used as a joke, which respect. Well, the Cadeters in the Lost Kingdom, well, it seems like the Cadeters are the same. Well, they have been defaulted at the end, unlike the Marvels. Like, the movie is just so dang fast paced that they did not even take time to develop their characters. Well, the only character that I see that has been developed is Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel is the only character that has learned something and make up for, while the other two main characters did not. Well, Aquaman 2 really hits the home run, how they ended the movie, including the characters growing. And me personally, if it comes to comedy, then the Marvels has that in the bag. Well, Aquaman 2 has some comedy too, but I don't remember laughing at all of the funny scenes. For how hilarious entertaining the Marvel was, the comedy scene in this one got me. So the movie with the superior characters, <sighs> I guess the Marvels, Okay, I can obviously tell it is not close. The villain, Darbin, has no villainous motivation. Yike, her backstory was just rushed out. Yike, it does not explain enough details how she really became the villain. Beside Captain Marvel killing her people, and the sun just died. Mm. And if the sun just died, should the people be dying too? Because we all know that we cannot survive without a sun. Well, Killmonger is a better villain by miles than Starbin. And even Black Manta is a better villain. His was actually a threat that attempted to kill Aquaman and his family. And to come to think about it, both of these movies does not have any death scenes. Well, I was expecting Aquaman's mom to get killed off because, you know, to end her story. Or better yet, they could've ended Aquaman's dad's story because he literally got stabbed and really hurt. But 20 minutes later, Aquaman's dad was just fine, like nothing happened. And that's like playing it safe. Like the movie could have been tragic and emotional if they actually killed off Aquaman's mom or dad. Well, I'm not saying you can waste these characters. No, don't waste these characters. Just kill them off with some respect. That way you can make a more impactful story. Unlike the Flash movie was. Well, speaking of the Flash movie, Aquaman 2 has a wasted post credit scene. Yike, all it shows is Orb eating a cockroach with a cheeseburger. Okay, well, sure, it was funny, but most post credit scene would have something interesting going on, and this one does not. Well, the Marvel has way better post credit scenes. Monica ended up in a totally different universe where her mom was alive. And then we see the Beast from the X-Men. Well, that is some interesting stuff right there. Unlike the cockroach eating burger scene. 
Well, anyway, let's just get to the next round. The movie with a better, more executed villain. That goes to Aquaman in The Lost Kingdom. But the movie with the superior post credit scene is The Marvels. Well, Aquaman 2 has awesome action. Well, there's some one fight scene at the end that goes sort of fast paced and must handling impact. Well, the action in the Marvel was sort of mediocre. Everything about this movie was just too fast. They just rush it all. They just super speed the whole thing without even giving time to build the action up. Even the final battle scene was short. I am not impressed how they handled that. And beside, Captain Marvel would easily defeat Darbin. I mean, after all, she has took on Thanos in Endgame, so what's the point for her getting injured in this movie? Well, Thanos just hit Captain Marvel with the Power Stone, and she just took it like it was nothing, so that should not be a problem for Captain Marvel. Okay, the only action that I like in the Marvels, it's the fight scene from the beginning. This fight scene in the beginning just show a fun time, and that got me excited to see the next action in the rest of the movie. But the rest of the action was disappointing, so I could have been even more impressed if the Marvel actually did a better job with the fight scenes. Because this is just basic baby stuff. Well, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom did not play it as safe like the Marvels. And I was really impressed with these actions. It was impactful and a somewhat fun time. And after all, it is a underwater movie to experience. So that puts the Marvel in shame for playing it safe. Because this movie is just a movie made for teenage girls, kid-friendly stuff. And plus Captain Marvel singing, which I don't really like in this movie. The movie with the superior action is Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom all the way. Aquaman The Lost Kingdom is a good movie. There's no reason for this movie to be a failure. It's just pretty alright for the last DEU movie. The Marvels is not great. Well, it's certainly not terrible either. This movie is just mediocre in a good way. I did enjoy the interaction between the three main characters, even though it was rushed out, and some YouTuber girl called Amanda the Jedi said that the Marvels is better. Well, no disrespect for her, but I kind of don't agree. Well, the Marvel may have better rating scores than Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, but I I mostly think that The Lost Kingdom is better for the right reasons. Well, I'm never ever going to watch The Marvels again, but it was a decent time watching it in theaters. But I still won't watch it again. Well, The Lost Kingdom is more rewatchable than The Marvels because when I watch it again, it was even more awesome. Well, it's time
time for the rating scores. Just to keep that in mind, I don't really hate the Marvels, because I was laughing the whole time. So, I'm just going to give it a decent 5 out of 10. And Aquaman The Lost Kingdom gets an 8. So, what do you all think? If you like the Marvels better, then whatever, man. But, if you actually agree with me, then you're awesome.